In this video, you'll learn how to use Phaser's camera system to smoothly follow our player, set boundaries, and create a fade-in effect when the level starts. Let's get into it. Out of the box, Phaser 3 has a built-in camera system, and at a high level, a camera is a way for you to control which part of the game world you're currently looking at. So in Phaser, your game world doesn't have a restricted size. It stretches in the infinite both positive and negative directions for both the X and Y axis. What this means is we can only display part of our game at any given time, and your camera is responsible for this. So by default, when you create a scene, this is going to create a single camera, your main camera for that scene that's ready to be used. Your camera settings are going to be based on your game configuration, and typically your camera will match the game size that you specify in your game config. So that's why in our level here that we're creating in Phaser Editor, if we set our border for our current level to match our game configuration, that ensures that whatever is visible in that border is visible in our canvas element. Because our camera, when it's created, it's using that full width and height of our game settings, so our 256 by 224. And so with your camera game object, you're given complete control of its positioning, the size, the rotation, scaling, and the viewport. Uh, so in Phaser, you can have more than one camera in your game, and this allows you to do things like picture-in-picture -picture effects. And with your camera, you can even give it a bounds, which will be a rectangle area where your camera cannot scroll outside of it. So if you are interested in learning more about the camera system, I do recommend checking out the Phaser documentation, and there'll be a link to this in the description of the video. So now that we reviewed our camera system at our high level, let's update our camera and our scene to follow our player as he moves around our level. To do this, we're gonna add a new script node to our project. So in our script nodes folder, let's do new. We're gonna do a new prefab file. For the file name, let's do camera follow object script. Let's do create. In our new scene file that's created, let's expand our script blocks. Let's drag in our script node, we'll save. Now let's open up our camera follow object script.js file. So now for this script, we only want this to run after our scene is set up and all of our game objects are created with the appropriate properties. To make sure that's happened, we're going to use our awake method for our script node. So now to update our camera to follow our player, we need to grab a reference to our scene that our script node belongs to. And we want to reference our camera's property, and then from here we want to reference main. So in Phaser, when we create a brand new Phaser scene, that scene's automatically going to create one camera for us. It's going to assign it to our main property on our camera's manager for that scene. So in our scenes, we can have more than one camera, but our main camera is the one that's always going to be rendering out what we see uh, in our initial scene. So now that we have a reference to our camera, we can call the start follow method. And inside this method, this is where we can provide a target or the game object that we want our camera to follow. So now for us to specify which game object we want to follow, we'll need to update our prefab to allow us to pass a property uh, for that game object. So over in our camera follow object script scene file, if we click on our prefab properties from our outline, in our inspector, let's do add property. For this, we're going to want this to be a game object, so let's choose our object variable property. We'll do add property. We're going to call this target game object. Now for our tooltip, we'll say the game object we want the camera to follow. We won't choose a default value. Let's save. Come back over to our script. We should see our new property in our class. So now that we have our new property, we can pass that in our method here. So we'll pass in this and our target game object. One last thing we'll do in our awake method is we're going to make sure we actually have a scene associated with our script node and that we actually have a target game object. So let's do if not this.scene. So if our scene doesn't exist or not this, our target game object. So if either of those are undefined or null, then we want to return early and not run our code. Now before we test, we just need to update our script node instance in our level scene. So in our level scene, if we choose our camera follow object script, we want to go into our inspector, and now we want to choose our target game object. Our target game object, let's look for our player. So we'll pass in our player prefab instance. Let's save. Now if we come over to our browser, let's refresh. Right away, we'll notice that our camera is now focused on our player, and so we can see that it's shifted down, and now we see a different view of our level. And as our player moves around our level, our camera is now updating to follow our player. So now to make our camera follow our game object more smoothly, there's a few additional arguments we can pass to our start follow method. And so our first argument is going to be around pixels. By default, this is set to false. And what this will do is it's going to update your camera's positioning as it moves, 
to make sure its x and y values are whole integers. And this can be useful for pixel art games uh, because as your camera moves, you might notice a jitter effect where we're only running out a partial pixel. And so we're going to set this to be true since we're doing pixel art. And next we can pass a lerp x and lerp y. And these are values that allows you to specify your linear interpretation of how fast your camera is going to move towards your target object, so towards our player. And by default it's set to one, but we can do a smaller value to have this be really smooth. And it's going to have it slowly start moving towards that game object. Uh, so here, the 0.1 means the camera would move 10% toward the player each frame instead of automatically snapping to our player. And so if we want to test out our new settings, if we come back to our browser, now as we move around, we'll see our camera slowly updates to follow our game object. And now we can tweak those values if we want to. So instead of doing 0.1, let's try 0.5. We'll test our camera settings. Much better. So now to make our script a little bit more dynamic, we're going to add these as properties uh, to our script node. So if we go into our camera follow object script scene file, let's go to add property. First, we'll start with our two lerp values. So let's add a new number property. So now for our property name, let's do lerp x. For default value, let's do 0 0.5. So now I'll do the same thing for lerp y. And now let's add our two properties for our dead zone. So we'll do a number property. We'll do dead zone width. For our default value, we do 100. And now we're going to do our dead zone height. So now if we come back to our script, let's update our script to use those values. So we'll do this. We'll do our lerp x. This, our lerp y. We'll do this, our dead zone width. And then our dead zone height. So now if we save, we come back to our browser. And if we test, our game should work just like it did before. To keep the camera from scrolling outside of our level, we'll need to set the bounds on our camera game object. The camera bounds controls where our camera can scroll to, stopping it from scrolling off the edges into blank space in our world. It doesn't limit the placement of game objects or where the camera viewpoint can be positioned. By default, since our phaser world size is infinite, our cameras are automatically allowed to move anywhere within our world. And so by setting our bounds, we can limit where that camera can move to. So if we want to update our game to have our camera show what we have visible here in our scene but still follow our player, we'll need to update our bounds. To do that, we'll make a new script node. So we go into our script nodes folder. Let's make a new prefab file. For this, we'll call it set camera bound script. Let's drag in an instance of our script node block. Let's save. Let's open up our JS file. I'm going to go over to our camera follow script. I'm going to copy our awake block from here. We'll come to our set camera bound script. Let's paste in our code. Let's update our if statement here so we only check for our scene. And let's remove our code here all the way up to this.scene.cameras.main. And now we want to call set bounds. So now for our set bounds method, we need to provide the rectangle or our area that our camera can move within. So for this, we need to provide our starting x and y value for the top left corner of this rectangle. So for now, let's do 0, 0 for our x and y. So now for our width and height, we'll grab this from our scale manager on our scene. So we'll do this, we'll do our scene, scale, let's grab our width, we'll do our scene, our scale, and now we'll do our height. So now if we save, let's come over to our level scene, let's drag in an instance of our new script. So we'll drag in our set camera bounds. All right, so now if we save, let's come over to our browser, we'll test. We'll see right away our camera's updated, and now it's back in its original position. And if we move our player around, it doesn't look like our camera's following our player anymore. So what's happening is we set our bounding box to be the size of our original game, and so that means our camera can't move from this initial position. If we want to have our camera be able to move, we'll need to increase the size for our width and height. So for this, I'm just going to multiply this by 3, and for our height, we're going to leave our height alone because we want to stay in that view. Now if we come back to our browser, if we try having our player move to the left, we'll see our camera doesn't update. And that's because we set our bounding box to be at position 0, 0, and so we can't move past the edge of our screen here. But if we move to the right, we'll see our camera starts updating to follow our player since we increase the size of our bounding box. Finally, to make our script a little more dynamic, we're going to expose these as properties on our script. So if we open up our set camera bound script scene file, let's go to our prefab properties, let's add a property. For our four properties, these will all be numbers. So we're going to do our x value. We'll have our default user value be 0. Now for y. 
Let's add in width. Snap our default value. Let's do 768. And now we'll do our height. And we'll do 224. So now if we jump back over to our JS file, let's update our code. So we'll remove these four arguments here. Let's do this.x, this.y, this.width, and then this.height. So now if we save, if we refresh, our camera should be updated to follow our player. And as our player moves around, our camera updates. Nice. To polish things off, let's add a smooth fade in effect at the start of our level. For this, we're gonna use our built-in effects on our phaser camera. So let's make a new script node. We'll do new, new prefab file. For this, we're gonna call it fade camera script. Let's drag an instance of our script node. Let's save. Let's open up our fade camera script.js file. It's gonna down our code. Let's add in our awake method. So now in our method, first we'll make sure our scene property set. So we'll do if not this.scene. We're gonna return early. Otherwise, we'll do this, our scene. We'll reference our cameras manager. Let's grab our main camera. And now to do our fade in effect, we need to use our fade in method. And in our method, we can provide our duration as well as the color we want our fade effect to be. So for our duration, let's do a thousand milliseconds or one second. And now for our color, if we set our red, our green, and our blue to all to zero, it'll be a fade in color of black. All right, now if we save, now we need to add an instance of our script node to our scene. So now let's drag in an instance of our fade camera script. Let's save. Come over to our browser, let's refresh, and now we have this nice fade in effect when our level starts. All right, let's test all of our camera changes together. Our camera fades in, follows the player smoothly, stays locked in within our level bounds, and with just a few lines of code, your game feels much more polished. And with that, that brings this video to an end. So thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we'll dive into the built in tile map editor in Phaser Editor v4 and use it to design and build out our level layout. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Subscribe for more Phaser tutorials, and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'd be happy to help.